Okay, I thought we'd work on this a little bit today. Solve an equation by completing the square. Here we are with these two conflicting realities. One is the immediate reality, and the second is the greater reality. The immediate reality is that your professor or your, te or your teacher will expect you, will ask you to do it and ask you to complete this just like this. And they'll say, hey, here's this equation. Solve this by completing the square. Well, that's terrific. And in which case, they're going to want you to move this 3 out to over here. And they're going to want you to go at it this way. The greater reality, though, and the one that I'm most interested in, is that is if you're working on this, then you're heading to calculus and you're heading to much greater things. And I'm happy for you, and I'd like to be a part of that. So what that brings me to is this, that if you see an equation that has a, that in its highest exponential value of a variable is squared, then you're supposed to automatically think this, that ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. And you're supposed to set it up that way. In that case, this completing the square idea, it would be a little bit different than what your professor is saying. They would want, we would want you to move it this over here first. So I'm going to do it that way. And uh, you do it whichever way your professor or your teacher tells you to do it. But this is how I would do this. So I would just start my investigation as if I did not know I was going to be completing the square. And I would add 10 to both sides, and I'd get plus 13 is equal to 0. So your teacher or professor said, well, that's not what we're teaching you. Yeah, but you're supposed to be providing us with this tool to use over and over. It's not just an immediate thing. It's a tool that, that we're going to use later. So I would start here as if I didn't know I was going to be using this rule and say, do I have something here? Is there a way for me to, are there two numbers that, that multiply to positive 13, but when I add them, I get negative, I get negative 14, and there are. And there actually are. And we could do it that way. I'm not going to because I want to show you how to complete the square. So completing the square would just be done like this. The first thing you would do is you focus on this value, B. Remember, this is A, B, C, right? So I would divide B in half. So that's negative 14 divided by 2, which is equal to negative 7. <coughs> I would square that number. So from there, I would take this value, and I would square it. That's, so this is step one, this is step two. I'd square it, and I'd get 49. This gives us all of our secrets. This unlocks everything. Because now what I realize is I need this 13 to be a 49. So this is all I'm going to do. This is all that I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, these two pieces of information right here. Piece of information right here. I'm going to leave them over there for a second. And I'm going to start working this out. I say, okay, well, how do I turn 13 into 49? Well, if I add 36, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take x squared minus 14x plus 13, right? And I'm going to add 36 here is equal to 0, and I'm going to add 36 here. Why did I add 36 to both sides? Well, first off, why did I add 36 to this side? Because if I do, I'm going to have completed the square, and it's going to make this very, very factorable for me, and that's good news. On the other side of that, what I'm going to get is this. I have to add 36 to both sides because there's something called the additive rule of equality in algebra, and it works something like this. Take some number, any number you want. I'm going to take 5. And if I add 6 to this 5 over here, I'll get 11, and 11 does not equal 5. But if I add 6 to both sides... Then I get 11 on both sides. Something that you have to really keep in mind in algebra that we have to add like amounts to both sides of the equation, okay, after we've simplified everything. So we get x squared minus 14x plus 49 is equal to 36. Now, if you did this the way that you're the way that your the way that your professor or your instructor told you to do this, you're going to get the same exact outcome. My way, I think, is just better because it serves that greater reality, that that place where we're actually going with this. From here, I'm going to go ahead and factor, and now I know that there are two numbers that multiply to give me positive 49 and add to give me negative 14, and they are x minus 7 times x minus 7 is equal to 36. Now, something really important here x minus 7 times x minus 7, well, 5 times 5, as an example, is 5 squared. And x minus 7 and x minus 7 are the same number. So if I, if I multiply them times each other, I've squared them. So 
squared, right? This x minus 7 squared is equivalent to x minus 7 times x minus 7, right? Okay. Now, I'm trying to solve this, right, because we're asked to solve this. So to solve this, I need to undo this. So how would I get rid of a, a square, right? I can hear you. I swear I can. You take the square root of it, wouldn't you? Remember, same thing here. If you take the square root of one side, you must take the square root of the other side. And the square root of x minus 7 squared cancels and gives us x minus 7. And the square root of 36, and this is crucial, is plus or minus 6. Why? Because negative 6 times negative 6 is equal to positive 36. And of course, we know that positive 6 times positive 6 is also equal to 36. So we have to do this both ways, right? Going down here, so we're, we're going to get, here we want x by itself, so we're going to add 7 to both sides, so add 7 to both sides, and we get x is equal to, first I'll do it one way, which is 7 plus 6, 7 plus 6, where did that y plus? Because this plus sign right here is this one right here, right? Or we get x equals 7 minus 6. Where did the minus sign come from? I know you know, but this negative sign is this one. So x is equal to 13 or x is equal to 1. Now these are solutions, not factors, right? So here are our solutions. Okay? I hope this is helpful and you're going to go back, you're going to tell your instructor and they're going to say, no, 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 don't do it that way. Look, do whatever they say, but I'm telling you why I think you should do it the way that, that we did it in this problem, okay? Uh, I think I'll do one more problem like this, and I'll post it. Okay, you guys, good work. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, and your comments are always welcome.